Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be by request because the last time that Zoe was home, which was probably a couple weeks ago, I'm guessing, yeah, I think, two weeks ago. Um, I had a lot of people <laughs> request how Zoe got her hair so curly. And the answer is I didn't know because I've never had to train my hair to be curly. I had to figure out it all myself. And Zoe had to do a lot of work. She had some wave to her hair, um, but it definitely- Just always. Yeah, yeah, it definitely wasn't curly like it is now. So I'm gonna put the camera on Zoe and she's going to explain how her hair went from wavy to be this curly. Right <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, I'll put the camera on you. Um, uh, so, should I say like this? I feel like I'm getting interviewed. <laughs> this is weird. There you go. You're like perfect. I'm on the news. You're perfect. Um, so, yeah, I always had like curly hair, but I never really like did anything about it. So I always used heat on it. So like the ends were always fried, and it was like curly at the roots, but then the ends were like straight, and like I just used heat on it and tried to like ignore it because I didn't really like it at first. And then um, my hair was blonde, so it was like really damaged. Oh, and yeah. then after my blonde hair era, I dyed it back to brown, and then it got like more healthy from there. And then I was like, I'm just gonna cut it all. Yeah, so that then, was in like in 2020. Right? The end of 2020, yeah. so I dyed my hair brown. Yeah. And when I cut it, also. Yeah. So So uh, then I cut it, and then. I had it like natural, but I don't. I don't know. Was that when I started working on my curly hair? Or was no, that like you you after waited. My mullet. Yeah, it you waited for a, my you waited for a while until it grew up out a little bit because yeah. it was really really short. Yeah, I cut it like mullet size, and it yeah. was like it was like this, and I didn't do it too crazy at first, and then. I grew it out, I think, and then a while after that, it's like a little blurry. Yeah. And then a while after that, I like shaved the sides yeah. and cut it really, really short and had bangs and That's like a right. full mullet. And after that, I like dyed it and I was still straightening it to style it because it was so short that I couldn't have it curly. So I was still using heat on it and like not really taking it seriously. Yeah. And then once it started to grow out, then it was like more of like a shag mullet kind of, but really, really short. So I was able to like have my curls and it like wasn't, it like it didn't look horrible and yeah. I just like kind of dealt with it. And that was when I like realized that I like wanted to like keep my curly hair. So I like stopped using heat on it and I didn't get haircuts at all. I would just, I stopped showering as often too. That's another thing that's bad for it. Is and hot, really hot, water. You hot water. You didn't do, you didn't, you didn't use hot water. You, you ended up using a lot of uh, cool water. Yeah. I to would wash shower your hair. in like lukewarm water. Like it was still warm, just not like super, super like burning hot. Yeah. And then I would, the last like half of my shower, I would do like cool water, not like freezing cold. Like you don't have to do like an ice bath, but like kind of like warm warm slash cool water and that helped a lot I think honestly the thing that helps the most is not using heat and that's like the hardest thing especially when you're transitioning from having like dead curly hair to wanting it to be healthy and like alive and curly and you straightened that, like, it a lot too yeah, yeah yeah and like that's the thing is that like you can't just like make it look good like even if you like curl it and then you just like what I used to do is I used to like take a curling iron and curl the parts yes, that like I were remember straight that. and that's like you're literally defeating the purpose <laughs> like it's like the worst thing that you could do yeah but if you just like let it be ugly for a few months like I promise it'll like end up looking so good in the end and what did you do after like a shower or something or what oh, yeah. pro so, like, what products routine, did you, you use um I still use Shea Moisture that's like probably like the least expensive best brand that you can get that has like the least amount of chemicals mm -hmm. because the problem with most hair products is that the chemicals in it will make your hair feel really good i literally will use my friend's shampoo and conditioner and i'm like oh my god my hair feels so good i wish i could like actually use a shampoo and conditioner but it makes your hair feel so good for like a few weeks and then in the long run it makes it dry out and gives you split ends and like it's just like self-destruction mm -hmm. um so it's really important to look at the ingredients in the hair products that you're buying also whether it's shampoo and conditioner or if it's like curl cream or gel or anything like that like it's really important to like watch out for the chemicals i couldn't tell you like the names of them but if you just like google the list or this this really good app oh my god mm -hmm. the yuka app hold on yeah you told me about that I think app. it's called yuka and it's a carrot <laughs> the the emoticon is a carrot yeah it's right here yuka 
It's so good. And it's not just for hair products. There we go. It's for like, it's for any products. Yuka. Y-U-K-A if anybody has. And the emoticon is a little carrot. Yeah. And you can use it for any product. Like, you can probably use it for food too, I would imagine. I just use it for beauty products. But you just scan the label and it tells you the ingredients in it if they're beneficial or if they're like bad for you yeah. and like it tells you why they're bad for you what it can cause and like because a lot of chemicals in a lot of products like beauty products can like end up causing cancer and stuff like that like really bad stuff so that works really well like just go to the drugstore and like scan every product that you want to buy but shea moisture was good and that's yeah. i think that was the only products that you used all around you use the shampoo conditioner and then the Still. curl the curl cream yeah and that's the only three products that you really kept consistent from yeah. when you were training your curly For hair sure. and did you use how did you dry your hair um so i'll take you through like my shower <laughs> yeah so i just like shampoo it like normally and the thing with shampooing is like to not like don't bring the shampoo down and go like this like just shampoo your roots and like scrub it yeah and massage your roots and then rinse that out because the thing like you don't need to like wash all of your shampoo because when you rinse your hair the shampoo like washes down and like washes it that way mm -hmm. and then um after the shampoo just put the conditioner only on your roots because if you put on the your conditioner ends. on your roots or on your ends sorry, yeah 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 only put it on your ends because you put it on your roots then your roots will get greasy yeah and um rinse that out i don't wash my you can rinse out your conditioner like 100 percent, like completely wash it out but i usually will wash it out like like 80% and I'll leave a little bit in my hair just to leave more moisture and product in my hair to like absorb. I do I do the same thing and then after I get out of the shower I now that my hair is like curly and I know that it'll curl no matter what I wring it out dry and like still leave a little bit of moisture in it but if you're trying to like train your hair to be curly and if it's not already like curly how mine is then it's really important to leave it like sopping wet like as much yeah. water as possible because the water works with your hair to give it the curl and it works with the products as well so you leave it like sopping wet like don't wring it out or anything and then i the only two products that i use and i've maybe used more in the past but like the only ones that i found you really need is a curl cream and a gel and i use the shea moisture smoothie i can show the products too i have them here yeah i'll do an but, overlay of the photos yeah. while you're talking yeah i i use the shea moisture smoothie curl cream for my hair and it depends on how much hair you have but like a generous amount and then just kind of like rub it through my hands and then you there's a lot of different like techniques of applying cream to your yeah. hair but i will like rake it through and really like work it through my whole head to make sure it gets on every piece of my hair so that like this piece isn't like really crunchy and this piece is like frizzy mm -hmm. and then um i'll scrunch it after that and like still like don't wring it out just just like scrunch it to like get extra moisture out and then after that um i will put gel in my hands and spread it around and then just scrunch my hair i won't like massage the gel through my hair or anything because the gel is kind of like a setting Thing, yeah you know like it kind of just like sets it it's more like, it's kind of like hairspray you know? yeah yeah so you kind of just like scrunch it into your hair and then after that i use a microfiber towel that's another thing that's like oh. really really like crucial at least for me it has been like it helped my hair so much you can literally get them at the dollar store i i don't think i brought mine but they're from the dollar store it's any microfiber towel like it can even just be like a dish towel it doesn't even have to be for hair but any microfiber towel i usually will wrap my hair in it while it's still wet i won't dry it or anything and then i'll let it like sit on my hair or my head for a little bit and let it like with the product in it yeah oh, okay yeah so I'll like, to dry my hair too, I'll like flip it upside down and then put the towel like this and wrap it around so that my head, my hair stays like this on my okay. head, you know? So yeah. that it like gets more volume instead of being like flat down or even like wrapped up tight in a towel, like how you usually do it. Yeah. Um, and and how, do you, how do you get it from like it not going crunchy? It's like the soft curls. Yeah, that depends on the products that you use and the amount of gel that you use is really important. You can't use too much gel or it'll be really crunchy. Yeah. And um, sometimes like you can, I, there's like, I can't remember what it's called. It's like scrunch it out method or something like that where you use like a bunch of product and then after it's dry, you shake it out and scrunch it. But like that only works if you use the right amount of product and you kind of have to like experiment with it to get yeah. it right. Yeah. Um, 
because mine is sometimes crunchy because I just let it air dry after I put product in it. Yeah. But now sometimes you use a diffuser. Yeah, sometimes now. I'll use a diffuser. Like, it really just depends on how I'm feeling. Like, yeah. If I want to or not. Um, but the key, I think, is when if people are trying to get their hair curly and starting from scratch is... I, what, what's your top three things that people should do if they're just starting out and their hair has like a little bit of wave and you know consistency probably right yeah consistency no with heat everything yeah like like consistency with how often you shower with using your hair products with not using heat with like everything like yeah consistency with everything like no hair dryer no no curling iron yeah, no straightener like strict with it no no especially nothing. when you're used to it it's like really 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 hard like yeah but once you have like, to be patient with yeah, it right for sure yeah and that's why during i would COVID, say number yeah. one is no heat like don't use heat on your hair try not to shower in burning hot water i still have hot showers yeah. but like it just doesn't have to be like steaming yeah um I don't even know. And products, I uh, yeah. would say. Yeah. Products is an important one. I think products is products very, yeah, that very important. are only, like, natural ingredients and, like, the least amount of harsh chemicals that you can. Yeah. Shea Moisture used to Shea be my favorite. Shea Moisture is so good. Shea yeah. Moisture is probably the best drugstore, like, least expensive brand that you can get. Definitely. And, and you don't I've need very much. for years. A little and bit goes a long yeah, way. It lasts a long time. Yeah. A really long time. Yeah. Um... I think, I think you covered everything, actually. What else? Oh, another thing is a Denman brush. A what? Denman brushes are great. Do you remember? You have a Denman brush. Oh, yes. I bought mine off. Yeah. I just bought mine off of Amazon. Yeah. That we, one thing that I've learned about that brush, it, it, it requires patience. a lot of patience. For sure. Because I literally will do like two strands and I'm fed up yeah, with but it. Mom also doesn't do her hair. Like if you're a girl that is used to like <laughs> blow drying your hair and then straightening it all and then curling it all, like then like you're yeah, fine with the true. But, like most, I feel like most girls like probably spend hours on their hair. Yeah, right I've now. never spent longer than probably like five minutes on my hair ever, yeah. ever, ever. I like have to braid it for like ten minutes, and she's like, "Are you done yet?" <laughs> <laughs> true. I've just never used any heat. Like I've never used a, a blow dryer or. Uh, curling iron a or a straightener. Time. Like, I've used a straightener, I think, a couple times, but yeah. I don't have the patience for Even that. Even just to diffuse my hair takes a while. Like, yeah. Yeah. And now that I just let it, like, air dry, I don't have the patience for Yeah, it. I let like, mine... I get it now. <laughs> I, yeah, I let mine air dry for sure. Yeah. But, um, a Denman brush. So, when I was training my hair to have, like, ringlet curls and to all be the same curl pattern yes. and to curl the way that I wanted it to, a Denman brush was so helpful. So, after you shower, like once it's like sopping wet and then you like put the product in it and everything and you wrap it up in a towel and it's like sitting on top of your head do that all of that and then once it's still wet don't let it dry mm -hmm. once it's still wet like take the towel off and then separate it like as if you were like curling your hair so like this and then leave like a little piece down mm -hmm. and then take the pieces like this i wish that i had my done brush i know mine is upstairs it. but you could there's a lot of look videos. up yeah look up a video on how to do it how to like you basically just twist your hair around the brush and then lay it and then it gives you a ringlet and basically. it'll yeah form and then you ringlet. like scrunch it and you do that with all of your hair. You did do that. I <laughs> it remember takes now. It a long time. It helped a lot, but though. You, yeah, and it gives your curls such a defined look, and it gets rid of so much frizz, and it helps so much. So, yeah, if you do that with, like, your entire head, and you can, um, what's the word? Like, alternate. You can alternate the, the curls, ringlets, yeah. so, like, make it come towards you one side and then away from And the then you don't side. do anything after you do that. You don't yeah. touch them or nothing. They'll well, just... you can, they'll... like, do... You can, like, scrunch it and then use the, um microfiber towel to scrunch it and like get moisture out of it because that'll help them curl more to use the microfiber after using yeah. the diamond brush and it then dries, it's so it nice dry. using that I you must can say. you can diffuse it after that too. oh okay. that would probably make it look really good if you diffuse but it don't if there's the if they're brush. just learning but don't brush it out after that just like have the ringlets and then scrunch it and then let it dry yeah the one thing with curly hair like for for me it's hard. It's a real process. It, it is. It, it Well, for somebody that's learning... And like, also the thing is that everybody's different. Like, I can tell this to 
like one person mm -hmm. and it won't work at all for yeah. them and then i could tell it to another person and it would like solve all of their problems you yeah. know like because and me and zoe have like our curls are it's hard to see my curls they're but really different they're real our curls are different and you know yeah, like, you have to you film your curls and then you film mine you have to like learn you have to learn how uh to do your your curls. own curls. Yeah, Everybody's mine, curls are different. Mine gets a little bit frizzy because I don't put in the work. <laughs> <laughs> like Zoe said, it's really hard to see because I'm wearing a dark shirt. But, you know, it takes a long time to learn how your curls work. And whatever product you use, like me and Zoe relatively use the same product. Me and Zoe usually use the same product, honestly and our curls will turn out differently right yeah. so and there's also different curl types yeah can, like say what our curl types are if we look at like a picture or something yeah I think mine is three i don't think it really matters though at the end of the something. day right you know what well, i mean like there's like kinky curls and there's wavy curls and mm -hmm. i'm sure that like people with different curl patterns and curl textures like people have more frizz and less frizz and yeah. like, stuff like that like everybody has to find their own routine but like i feel like giving advice is the best that you can do really. yeah and like i said it's just to each their own like some days yeah. are better than others as well like oh for sure. you know your zoe's hair can get way curlier than than this and same with mine like it's the end of the day right now and you know depending on how much is this did you just wash it or is this day old hair um or did I you just, just wet it i just ran it under the the faucet and yeah the product in it so, so this I isn't like shower. this isn't like fresh hair yeah, so it can get curlier it. but it's really hard to to give it's really hard to give advice you just have to kind of trial and error and i think exactly. consistency is is Cheap. huge yeah because i do remember like yeah we weren't doing anything because it was covid and that was like her priority during that time because obviously like we weren't doing anything and we even weren't working after that i cut all of my hair off and started using heat and dyed it again you know yeah. what i mean like it, still it's been through like so many cycles and like the most yeah. important thing because i like if they knew what i did with my hair mom like they did so I much dyeing. dyed my hair so often i cut it myself all the time like i would like wreck my it's just so funny that i used to be that and now i'm this and yeah. it was so hard to not dye my hair after like always being the person that dyed my hair because yeah. i craved it so much and i yeah. truly love dyeing my hair and keeping up with it every month and doing a new color it was so fun and it's really hard to give that up and every day in high school she was straightening her hair or having like like straightening it and oh, I would doing not, loose curls. I would not leave the house with my natural hair <laughs> no. ever because it would be so bad. It was like a frizzy disaster because I didn't know how to like take care of it. And I think and, like, you would have had key. to you would have had to cut it anyways. Like yeah. I think at that point, yeah, you would have had to cut it and really start from if from you scrap. do, yeah, if if like if, if you, you want to do hair. this and you do have damaged hair that it's like you have like inches of split ends, I would recommend cutting it all off. Like yeah. I literally shaved the sides of my head and like fully cut it like shoulder length, less than shoulder length. Like yeah. it was really, really short. And that's like the best thing that you can do. Cause especially when you cut it and you're committed after you cut it and you don't dye it after that and you don't straighten it after that, like yeah. just let it grow. And that's it'll what, grow in so nice. That's what I did actually. Cause my hair was damaged for a while this was years and years ago and it was very damaged and the hairdresser who's now a good friend she said you have to cut it all off because it is so damaged and you just lost all your curl it's just complete frizz now and i had to cut it off that's when i got it short and yeah. i saved i shaved one side of my head and the other one was kind of longer i remember that um but i had to it was so damaged and ever since i did that then my curl has come back really really well so that definitely is is key as well yeah, so it's worth it thank you so much zoe for doing this video of course that I was good i didn't forget anything if you forgot something we'll just have little notes on the screen okay. <laughs> <laughs> or down in the description we'll do um i'll do overlays with all of the products when we were talking about it so i'll take a quick video of that oh, yeah. but I definitely shea moisture is the way to go it's very yeah. inexpensive and that will get you on a good routine to get curls like i said zoe this is two years in the making of her mm. hair and she still uses the same products yeah. so the moisture's so good yeah it's, it's worth it and yeah. it's the cheapest and it has the best ingredients yeah, yeah for it's sure. definitely worth it so that is it for today's video you guys thanks again to zoe and we will see you guys in the next video bye bye guys <laughs>